go ahead and look at the next example. We want to find, a parametri find parametric equations for the ellipse. So here's our ellipse. Let's just draw a generic ellipse. Something like this. That should have been a little bit smoother there. And maybe we'll say it reaches down the x-axis farther than it reaches up the y-axis. So what are these values where it reaches in the end? Well, from the equation, we get that it's reaching along the x-axis to a, as far as right as a, and as far left as negative a, and b is how far it reaches up or down the y-axis. Now, I want to come up with a parameterization of this. Let's just jot down x equals cos of t, y equals sine of t as a start. I know this isn't going to give me the ellipse, because this is going to give me a circle. But I can look at this and say, well, I want the x values to go from negative a to a, but I only want the y values to go from negative b to b. So my cosine function, currently it goes from negative 1 to 1, if I modify the amplitude of it, make it a, now it will reach as far back as negative a and as far forward as a. And similarly for my y function, I'm going to make that b sine of t, so it reaches up to b and down to negative b. And I'll let my t values go from 0 to 2 pi. Let's perform our check to see if these points actually do live on the ellipse. So we're going to look at x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. And we're going to see if that expression is equal to 1 for our choices of these functions. Well, what's x squared? Well, that's a squared cos squared t over a squared. And that's added to y squared, which is b squared sine squared t over b squared. And that's great because those b squares and the a squares cancel. And so this becomes just cos squared plus sine squared, which is 1. And so it checks out. This does give me a parameterization of the ellipse. Which direction is it parameterizing it? Where's the initial and terminal points? So when t is 0, I get cos of 0, which is 1, times b times sine of 0, which is 0. So cos of 0 is 1 times a. So we're right here. We're right here at a0. So that's t equals 0. When t is pi by 2, cos of pi by 2 is 0. So the x-coordinate is 0. Sine of pi by 2 is 1. So the y value is b. So we're up here at t equals pi by 2. And so we're tracing it in this direction. We can fill in some other values. So that's t equals pi over here. This is t equals 3 pi by 2. And then we're back. Our initial point is also our terminal point, which corresponds to the value of the parameter, 2 pi. So we've parameterized the ellipse. We get it to sweep it out once over this interval, 0 to 2 pi. All right, so now I just want to look at some interesting cases of what we've just done here. So I'm going to back it up. So we've just looked at the circle. And the circle was x equals cos of t, y equals sine of t as our parameterization. If we let our parameter go, this is how our circle gets traced out once over the interval from 0 to 2 pi. What happens if I change my circle a little bit and I introduce that extra factor of 2 in the arguments? Let's see them both sketched together. See, that extra factor of 2 is causing the argument to double before we evaluate at sine and cosine. So it traces the circle out once when the other one, when the original circle, was only traced out a half. And then, so once the red circle is traced out entirely, the blue circle has been traced out twice. So that's what I mean by it's moving twice as fast. And then we just looked at an ellipse, where instead of worrying about what's going on with the argument, we kept the argument 
just as t in both cases, but we change the amplitude. So this one here is going to make an ellipse where along the horizontal axes it's stretching out to 3 and negative 3, and along the vertical it's only stretching up to 2 and down to negative 2. So it's going to be wider than it is tall. And so there's our ellipse.